Hey everybody, this is Dominic D'Angelo. Today's date is July 2nd, 2021, and I'm happy to have with me here none other than the world famous CB who will be participating in Backyard Wrestling 3 on behalf of GCW. CB, thanks for joining me today, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so I um, wanted to start this off. Fourth of July late weekend uh, coming up here. What is, uh, what's some of your favorite aspects of the Fourth of July, like food? Uh, is there, do you like fireworks? Are you a fireworks guy or are you not kind of big into that? I do enjoy fireworks. Uh, I like the food, like hanging out with the family, uh, spending time with the, uh, the family, cooking out, everything like that. Uh, it's always uh, around the time of my birthday, which is awesome because my birthday is on the 3rd. And, oh, yeah, well, so, happy birthday. Early thank birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So that's always, uh, that's always a good time, uh, you know, cooking out, uh, celebrating the birthday, celebrating 4th of July. So uh, this would be, I think, like one of the first times I'll get to wrestle like like pretty close to my birthday so this is gonna be awesome. yeah i was gonna ask if you ever wrestled on your birthday before no no actually no this would be like the the, the first time i've had like a show like the directly the day after so it's like the the closest one i've had to my birthday oh how about that that's pretty cool um now as far as let's see yes so you'll be facing nasty leroy <laughs> yes um, <laughs> yeah i heard you were getting tips uh, from Jody about uh, punching yeah. him in the balls. Is that, yeah, is yeah, that going to be uh, part of the game plan? <laughs> yeah, Jody was giving me some uh, some tips. So, uh, you know, I'm very open about my game plan. And uh, I think uh, I think the balls might be uh, might be the way to go. You might be feeling it. Yeah, to win the match. I think, I think that might be the, that, that seems to be his weakness. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you got to fight dirty, you got to fight dirty here and there. That's, that's <laughs> how it goes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Now, what is your experience? Have you done a GCW backyard wrestling? Have you done any of the previous two events before? No, no, I haven't. I, I went to check out the um the second one they did last year. Um, just uh, uh it, it was like it was like not too far from me, so I went uh, checked it out, and it was it was an awesome show. I had a great time watching it, and um, it's gonna be uh, awesome to get to perform on it. Uh, and they have so many like insane matches. Like the entire show is gonna be insane. The last year's show was absolutely insane. So. I'm super pumped to see what they got this time. That's ready to see some wild stuff. Yeah, I saw they have a brother versus brother, and they were promoting yeah. it like Kane versus Undertaker, but yeah. uh, Dexter White and uh, Otis White. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they also have a buried alive match. I saw too. Yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, Janelle and uh, Dickinson doing the buried alive match. Holy smokes! Yeah, that's gonna be wild. Now, uh, from a presentation standpoint, is it on a trampoline? It's not on a trampoline, right? No, no. Last well, last year, um, I, I don't know if they change up the presentation every year but um there is like a, a wrestling ring um at least last year there's a the first two years there's a ring um and they would have various like backyard like props around ringside like so last year there was like like two like abandoned cars like people could use there's like a pool like there's like a big pool and, like a small like uh kitty pool um there's like trees around there's like um like a scaffold uh there was like a trampoline on the side as well so it like they they really go for it's really cool they go full force for like making it like an actual like backyard like it's like every like trope from like backyard like, yeah, wrestling, right. like, you know, like they present there and people can use it in their matches so like it i like it because it it adds to um it lets their like people's creativity kind of run wild with the show absolutely absolutely and now that you're saying all this it's kind of jogging my memory again being like oh yeah i do remember seeing clips of all this certain things yeah, so, yeah. um now from your experience uh when you were younger did you do backyard wrestling actually i didn't do backyard wrestling but i would wrestle with my friends like just like uh in the house like in like the like say we like had like friends or like in the in the room like we like use like you know pillows as like steel chairs and everything right. like wrestle there but we never like wrestle like outside like the actual like backyard like i very uh, i didn't really have like a backyard like growing up i always kind of like lived in like apartments so we just kind of like just wrestle around in like uh in like the house yeah <laughs> that's kind of what we we had a backyard but it, our parents would have murdered us if we uh <laughs> <laughs> had some mad matches outside in the back so mark and my brother and i we would definitely duke it out in the in the house oh okay yeah yeah some of the weapons uh we had a trade table and it was a metal trade table so mm. it made it didn't hurt at all but you could whack somebody the hell and it made just this awesome pop and then the, we, we never want to like break anything so we all just we just end up using pillows all the time right, right. <laughs> yeah. so yeah and then the dogs would get involved and it would just be a whole schmoz so we had to we had it called the no contest most times <laughs> but, <laughs> um 
as far as I wanted to ask you, what is like in general? Because I know the those gimmick matches you have the buried alive, that brother versus brother. Um, it doesn't have to be like a backyard re- wrestling related. What is like your overall kind of favorite gimmick match? Uh, favorite gimmick match? What to to watch or to compete in? How about okay? How about both? How about to watch and compete in? What's it? If you, um, if you compete to... in, I've been liking doing like pure rules, which is not like you know it's like a regular more wrestling match, but I've been enjoying doing that in ring of honor it's like the uh, the pure rules like gimmick which is like presents a whole nother uh aspect of wrestling in and of itself um in terms of my favorite to watch um i definitely enjoy watching like tlc matches um especially when they're put together and done really well like uh i like watching um like yeah tables lads and liars and chairs just you know there's been so many of cl- uh, those classic matches throughout the years and um uh, people's creativity is like i enjoy matches where people can be really creative with like some of the stuff they're doing right oh man yeah and tlc's i mean you look at the earlier ones with the hardies and oh my oh, yeah it was like they're so they they're so now at this point that it's, it's a lot of that stuff's been done and but at that time it was like holy crap i've never like this some of that stuff that they did oh yeah unprecedented brand new, yeah. Brand new, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, to, you mentioned it, the pure wrestling. I think that's such a f- awesome like choice to have in the. And also, too, it's like how big of a challenge was that for you to make the adjustments in the ring when it comes to the pure wrestling style? Um, it was just kind of understanding the the rules and how to structure a match on the rules. Like I think around the around those rules with the rope breaks and everything, um, which is the the biggest aspect of it, um, and. I think it's been, I've been getting better at it with uh, each match I've done with uh, Ring of Honor. And it's been the, the cool part about it. And it has been, we haven't had any, uh, any fans throughout the entire pandemic. So it's been a lot easier to try stuff because mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about like a negative reaction, like right away, you know, like it's very easy to, when, you know, if something's not working, your fans will let you know right away. And you're like, oh, this isn't working. We got to change up. But like, uh, at this point, it's easier to just kind of like try stuff and like adapt stuff because you don't have to worry about that immediate feedback. It's um, so I've been just figuring stuff out, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, uh, adapting it, figuring out what feels good, what doesn't feel good. And it's been progressing more and more there. And I look at the match structure of a pure match uh, differently than, you know, traditional match is going to have a three act structure where it's like a beginning, middle and end. But I look at the pure rules where it's kind of like each individual rope break it's its own like story part of the match where it's like oh, we have this rope break this how we get to this story we have this rope break how we get to that story and stuff just like all right baby face beats up heel he'll beat up baby face baby face beats up heel you know let's and then whatever it's like there's uh you can have a lot more uh more fun with it yeah oh man that's a great way to look at it too because mm-hmm. it is like each little window is like each story yes. that's trying to tell and convey yeah mm-hmm. that's very very cool um who's been your favorite to kind of work with in, in that kind of environment so far uh, in the ring, uh, I've liked all my pure matches, but probably my favorite, uh, is I've, I've worked with Wheeler Yuta twice. Uh, we've done, uh, two singles, uh, with pure rolls. One was at the end of a gauntlet match and the other one was just a straight up, uh, pure roll singles match where we got, um, like a decent amount of time to, to really, uh, wrestle in them. I, I've known you for so long and I was really happy. I finally got to wrestle him in, in the, in the singles match and we have very, very good chemistry in, uh, the, the match we have, which is on um, ROH week by week, it's uh, it's one of my favorite singles matches like I've ever had, and uh, he's he's super talented. So uh, definitely Yuta, uh, he's been awesome to work with. Um, uh, Tracy Williams, he was my first match back from the pandemic with Ring of Honor. Uh, I had a great time wrestling him, uh, and just yeah, every every uh, every every pure rules match I've been really enjoying. Also uh, too, uh, Mike Bennett, we uh, we had a pure rules match as well, and he's 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 awesome. It's so cool because it does offer like it's such a like such a simple aspect of wrestling. Like it's the bare bones, almost foundation of wrestling, but oh, yeah. it's something that's been not applied to as much in, you know, obviously in modern times and everything to see, to see it kind of get a new polish and a new shine in with modern day wrestling and stuff. It's been a very, very neat aspect. I remember watching like the first couple of episodes of that and just being fascinated and just a good overall profile of not only what happens in the ring but of the talent that are competing too that roh did a very good job with that kind of stuff oh yeah absolutely yeah absolutely um in terms of uh okay you mentioned like wrestling in your house and stuff like that to get to the backyard stuff again did you have like a certain song that you came out to when you were younger like what wrestling in the <laughs> house or whatever it may have been no, no. 
<laughs> never, I never had like a, a actual song account. I, actually, as I think about, it, I only know if we like. We never really even like came up with like characters or like. Oh or, really? Like, names. Yeah, we never even did. That. We just kind of just like, all right, we just like wrestlers. So let's just like, like fight each other, you know. Uh, <laughs> but we never, we never had the um the. And I think too, maybe that might have been because we were in like such a small like space in general. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't like then there was just like cross our minds. Like we just wanted to like you know emulate like our people we saw on TV. Um, but yeah, we never got to do like we never did like entrances, or we never like create like characters, and we never got to do that aspect of wrestling. We, backyard wrestling. We just kind of just just ball each other, hit each other with uh, our pillow still chairs yeah, or whatever. I mean, <laughs> the, the foreign objects we call pillows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um now uh you obviously uh people will know you as your previous moniker uh how what made you decide to make the name change the world famous cb and uh are you going to stick with that as well uh yeah i plan on sticking with it right now um i had a lot of time to think about my career during the pandemic and kind of like think about what i wanted to do and be presented as when we came back because you know i've been away from ring of honor for about like eight nine months at that point uh with the uh, just the pandemic and everything, the lockdown and all that. And I had uh, I had been thinking about like how to evolve cheeseburger or move on from cheeseburger or just evolve my career and go to the next step. And uh, I realized that I was kind of che- the cheeseburger gimmick was starting to kind of run its course and I wanted to evolve into something uh, a bit more serious and um, something where I could focus more on being a wrestler in addition to being a character rather than being looked at as a character who just also happens to, to wrestle. Um, whereas the, the cheeseburger character, I felt like there was a ceiling kind of on me where it's like, all right, no matter like how good a wrestler you come, you're always going to be kind of looked at as this, as this kind of goofy uh, character. Whereas now I can be, I can have more opportunity to showcase myself as a wrestler and be taken more seriously as a wrestler and while also having the character stuff as the the side piece to that. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, that's a good way to look at it for sure. Um, has uh, just not only like the pure style wrestling and uh, kind of just your downtime overall over the course of the, the COVID, has that kind of gave you a good resurgence and a good reassessment of how you're going to approach stuff ring style wise to moving forward? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to study uh, some wrestling during the break, and it I really made an effort to focus on my strong suits, which is our. Uh, I'm a, a very talented, like technical wrestler. Like I love technical wrestling. That was like the first thing when I started wrestling training. I was like really good at, and, like I, I picked up on really well. Um, so I really wanted to lean into that aspect of it and um, really show people that uh, I can I can hang with all the the best technical wrestlers uh, out there and. I re- the pure, the pure rules being brought back was the perfect timing for that because then it just allowed me to create like just bring everything together and like really make it a really it really help bring the character fully together by having that timing with the pure rules and also me transitioning to like a more serious style. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, is it, are there particular matches? We do a thing we call the watch list here at WrestleZone, where uh, you the the talent gives a certain list of matches. Maybe it could be your own or just ones that you've watched that that don't involve you. Even is there certain ones that have st- stood out to you that not only hey, uh, maybe if it's a match for you that mm-hmm. you like to fans, I want you to check this certain match out, or just matches that have helped you uh, kind of develop this new. Uh, mindset and, and style going in moving forward uh definitely um if people want to check out one of my uh, recent matches the match like i said with uh with the wheeler you the pure rules match it's on um roh's uh youtube uh week by week uh definitely check that out i highly recommend it it's a super fun match um in terms of uh matches that i would recommend that i studied uh one of my favorite like world of sport matches is um steve gray versus uh iron fist clock myers uh it's a uh, super good back and forth just like uh they have some really creative like technical stuff in there especially like stuff you uh, like don't even really see today um and that was like it's just like a super fast paced like awesome like technical british match uh, i highly recommend that one. Oh wow okay that's great man those are some, yeah i like that that, that second one i didn't <laughs> expect that that's awesome no yeah that that one that one's it's super good uh steve gray is one of my uh favorite world of sport guys also um any uh steve gray versus um uh jim breaks match from world of sport is uh worth watching so 
uh, definitely check out some Steve Gray, Steve Gray, uh, Clive Myers and Jim Briggs are, are my three favorites there. That's great, man. That's great. <laughs> Something I saw too today while I was on Twitter was, um, uh, AEW listed like a list of talents and stuff like that. Like oh yeah. yeah. Harrington did. And you were super happy because you saw a lot of the wrestlers that you like trained and worked with, uh, mm-hmm. like getting those opportunities throughout that course of the year. Um, as far as that goes, um, who, who's really stood out to you from that perspective of not only maybe that you've trained them, but, uh, just talents that you've really seen flourish and make the most of their moments. Oh, it's been, it's been super cool. That's been like such a, uh, uh, a cool like aspect of wrestling um like throughout the whole pandemic just uh getting to see so many people that uh i like just either had a chance to work with or maybe like uh, i've like helped train like a little bit or like visit the school or just people i just met throughout the the years uh like it's just been it's been it's been awesome to see that uh I'm trying to think, oh, you put me on the spot. Yeah, think. sorry about that. <laughs> that's quite the uh, list too. They that Chris Harrington tweeted out. It's a lot of people. no, yeah. There's like there's so so many people in that. Like <laughs> like it, I I I didn't realize like how many people like were actually like they that they actually like used throughout that like that, yeah. that came in during the pandemic. Um, uh, some people uh, like re- early on they're using a guy called uh, uh Matt Sells who's uh he he trained with us at ROH for like a, a number of years before moving back down to Atlanta and then. Now it trains at the uh, Nightmare Factory down there. They they use them a few times uh, during the early during like the early days of dark, where like people like everyone got like entrances and everything, and yeah. all the matches like fifty fifty. He got the um, and like there's a it was I forgot what the match was. It was his tag match. It was like him and someone else against like I think like I want to say QT and um, Dustin. And uh, as like uh, like I like uh, I've known Sells for like years, and um, when he moved back to Atlanta, he started actually doing the show tape Palm Strike. And like he'll yell like like burger when he like does it. Uh, so like uh, he didn't yell burger when he did a w- he did do the um uh, the, uh, the palm strike against QT in the match which uh, which popped me. Uh, but he only got like a one count on it. So I texted him. I was like I was like using my finisher. He only got like a one count off of it. <laughs> what the heck, man? <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that that was one of my that was a cool moment. I, I, I was happy he got the match. Did I, I saw he use the palm strike in it that uh, that popped me a lot. <laughs> yeah, <that's> great. <laughs> Um, and I've seen like, you know, people uh, that have come to through like, say, Ring of Honor tryouts that maybe didn't get picked up by Ring of Honor and now uh, do an AW. Like Nick Camarado done, had done a few tryouts. Um, uh, I remember Alan Angels had done like a tryout like a while back. And it's cool to kind of see him uh, get the get that spotlight. Um, Cody Vance as well. Uh, number 10, like he had done like uh, like two or three tryouts for us. And um, he, uh, you know, has found a home in AW too. So it's kind of cool to see people that like maybe uh either weren't ready or just like didn't uh, get picked up for, by like ring along at the time. Um, now seeing them achieve some level of success in, in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, moving forward too, is there certain talents that you're, you're looking forward to kind of tussling up with uh, as we move forward out of this pandemic thing? <laughs> oh, there, I mean, it's so like the Indies are right now are like incredibly, aren't they? Yeah. Incredibly packed, uh, full of talent. Um, I, I really want to, uh, lock up with Lee Moriarty. Um, he's, you know, probably the top independent wrestler, like right now, like he's, he's fantastic. Uh, everything he does is great. Um, Daniel Garcia is another one that I really want to wrestle. Um, I, I've wrestled, uh, Kevin Blackwood before who's, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Kevin Blackwood, Daniel Garcia, two, two other guys that have been on the AW Dark yeah. as well. It's cool to see him. Um, though, though they, they've been killing in their, uh, their opportunities they got with, um, with dark, uh, I think, uh, Garcia had like a really good match with Janela a while back and, um, Blackwood has gotten to have a bunch of really good uh, attack matches there. Um, both those guys are two, two of my list. That, uh, I really want to, want to wrestle Blackwood. We had a really fun match when I was cheeseburger and I think we can have a even better one now. Now that it's, yeah, now that you got a new, new, mm-hmm. uh, style and stuff going on. That's awesome, man. Um, okay. I'll close it out with this. I've been <laughs> collecting music from people um but i haven't made the playlist but it's like a huge i want to do like have each wrestler pick three songs that i can put for an ultimate like workout playlist if you had to pick okay. three songs it can be ones you're currently listening to or any overall the course of time that you're like yeah i want that one on my list if i Ooh, okay okay that's a good question so uh what three songs are you going to choose mm, let me think of what i'm going to use for my gym playlist uh it's been like flip flopping here and there uh one of the ones i added to my playlist uh, i got it from a friend recently was um a uh, bad bunny song actually it's called like i want to say safari or something it's like s-a-f 
E E R A. Okay. Um, that one's that one's been I've been really enjoying like listening to that. Uh, I've been uh, after like Bad Bunny done the stuff and wrestling. My friend that listened like she she recommended me like a bunch of different uh, songs. I've been really enjoying. So, um, so that would be like the first one. Um, if I had to recommend number two, I would say I've been listening to uh, Mathematics by uh, by Most Def, which is really good. Oh, nice. Uh, that's a that's a it's a very like um. It's not like as in your face, but it's got like a good beat and a good flow, and I really like working out to it. Um, and if I had to pick one more, let's talk one, one more. I would say "Still Fly" by uh, the Big Timers. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one, that one's, I've been listening to that a lot uh, lately. Uh, so those would be my three. That's good. To, I, I'm with you though, because it's like sometimes you get those like punch in the face music that really amps you up to get working out. But if you got a good like vibe, yeah, I think it flows sometimes. Like you can you can get in a good rhythm of working out. So oh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. So uh, July fourth, Backyard Wrestling three three p.m. on Fight TV Eastern Standard. Mm-hmm. Uh, cheeseburger, anything? I mean, CBE, anything else? <laughs> uh you know um yeah check out the backyard show it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be fantastic uh if you're a uh wrestler in, if you're uh, someone that look, wants to become a wrestler in the northeast area uh check out the worldwide wrestling dojo you can uh, follow our twitter and instagram at worldwide dojo we uh you know always accept new students we're located in bristol pennsylvania uh check out our instagram i post some cool videos and stuff of, uh, of our trainer from there so uh send us a message if you want to you know check out the class and want to pursue the pursue your journey to become a wrestler Heck yeah i can't think of anybody else better to train people too you you've got you have quite the resume build up so it's, thank uh, you thank you you're welcome man i'm looking forward to seeing what you do in roh and just in the independent scene moving forward it's going to be a lot of cool. fun cool thank right. you appreciate it you're welcome thanks guys this is dominic d'angelo wrestlezone.com follow me on twitter at dominic d'angelo follow wrestlezone on twitter at wrestlezone.com go to wrestlezone.com for all your wrestling news needs all right thanks guys cb thanks brother Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to do it and stuff. We'll keep you in the loop with everything. I'll, I'll be sure to like tweet you out and all that stuff. So, all right, cool. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. All the best to you. Enjoy your weekend too. Happy fourth right. and birthday. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.